Hi everybody and welcome to WASD 20. Today's video is an oft-requested one. It is all about how to draw canyons, cliffs, and chasms for your fantasy map. All right, welcome back everybody. My name is Nate. This is WASD 20, a channel about tabletop role-playing games and fantasy maps. Happy holidays, everybody. Tis the season to curl up by the fire with a cup of hot cocoa and a piece of paper to draw some maps. So today we're gonna to be doing just that. Now before we get down to the paper, I do wanna give a quick word of thanks to my sponsor for this video, Wonder Draft. Wonder Draft is an amazing map making program that I did a review of about a month ago. I'll put a link at the top of the screen to that review. And they are running their very first map making contest right now. I'll put a link to the rules and everything down in the video description. And I'll also put a link to Wonder Draft's website where you can pick it up. It's actually on sale for a limited time right now. All right, without further ado, let's get down to the drawing. All right, everybody, welcome back. It has been a while since the last mapping video, but here we are back at it. As I said earlier, today we're gonna be doing cliffs, canyons, and chasms. The basic process for drawing a cliff on your map from, from an isometric perspective, from a, uh, you know, an angled perspective, not a completely top-down perspective, is to first draw the top of the cliff the edge, if you will. Something like this, maybe. All right, so we've got that. And then from here, if you're drawing a, a vertical cliff, you're just gonna be drawing vertical lines straight down like that. And you kind of pick the points, as I do with my mountain ridgeline technique, often uh, just picking the most prominent uh, changes of direction for this, but it's kind of up to you. Um, start with a few, see how you like it, add more, sometimes you add too much, and then you gotta, gotta get out the uh, whiteout or eraser perhaps. Um, so something like that is already a pretty good start. So drawing a cliff is very, very easy. I personally also like to draw a few kind of dashed and broken lines in here. Just uh, think it adds some nice detail. So we'll do a few of those in between. Something like that can look kind of nice, All right? Now, you don't really need to draw an edge, a bottom edge to the cliff. I tend to think that that does not look very good. So what I recommend doing is if you are having this in the middle of a landmass, you can just leave it as is. So I'll give you an example of one of these on my land between two rivers map here. So you can see you know, I just had a cliff right here and just left it as is. Don't need to draw any bottom edge to that. Uh, the same thing is true of this kind of canyon or uh, gully or gulch right here. Didn't draw any bottom edge. Uh, did draw a river there, but um, yeah, no, no bottom edge. Now, if you are doing it along a coast, then I would recommend drawing an edge, you know, some kind of water line here. So uh, you can just do kind of a broken wave lines, something like that. It can look nice and you, you know, you don't want to make it completely parallel probably to your cliff and um, so I'm just doing my kind of broken wavy coastline technique but of course there are many different techniques you can use but this is uh, you know my coastline video I happen to have this laying around this style right here and if you want to see the uh, full video where I did three different coastline techniques you can check it out I'll put a card right up at the top there and you can check that out so here is Here's another map that has an example of this. This is an interesting map I did a long time ago. Um, this was Wild Dragon Cliff here on the Isle of Burke, which I don't think is actually like the map of Isle of Burke. But anyway, so that's a cliff that's on the edge there. And that's the only one I did on this map. Um, so you might have a lot of those. Uh, it might be just the style of your coastline actually to draw these cliffs. You wanna make your coastlines look like they're jutting up out of the water. But it can also be just, you know, uh, to note special cliffs. Like, there might be more cliffs on your map, but this is, this is a landmark here. And that was the case on, on that map. Now, a couple reasons that you might not be drawing your lines straight down would be, uh, for example, if you are doing a map that is um, more of a top-down view. So here's a coastline for a map. And let's just say we knew that we wanted to have some cliffs right here. And so we'll just draw lines straight out like that. 
and this edge right here is going to be cliffy. <laughs> and so in this case, I am going to draw lines here. And you can draw more right there. It's representing like that is a cliff on this edge and you can do another one over here and you're just generally gonna be drawing them straight out rather than straight down. Something like that. But another reason that you might not want to draw them totally straight down is if you're drawing more of a, a sloped uh, ridge line here. Not necessarily a steep, sheer cliff, but you know you can do something like this, where it's you know it's some kind of chasm or canyon, but it's not straight down. And if you want to do the sort of thing that I did on my WebDM map, uh, you can actually go in here and have some another ridge line there. And the temptation is always, oh, I wanna make this sloping down. So you could, I wanted to see that line on the WebDM Mac, so I did make this sloping down, but you could also just make it straight down like this. And you're gonna see very little of those lines, but it should give you the impression that they are there. And here's now our river. Be quick and dirty here with my river, but you get the idea. So this right here is sort of a, uh, a gully or a ravine of sorts. Um, but you could also, of course, do the, the chasm, the land scar. And uh, so something like this, if you do, I usually try to do it at a bit of an angle. And you can do it more straight down if you want to, but I try to angle it. And then we just go in and we can do this sort of thing here. And we've got this like just deep chasm and again, you're not gonna see much of that front edge, the lines there, uh, so you can just resist the temptation to draw anything there and just do your lines like this. And that gives you that impression. And you can kind of decide if you want it to end and you could shade that, you know, make it all darkened in down there uh, to give you the idea that it's, it's this very deep chasm or you can just you know, leave it without a line there. Now, if you're doing these top down, once again, you would not be going straight down, but uh, we would, uh, this is a very messy one here, but bear with me. <laughs> just doing a very quick one. You just do kind of this middle line here and you could go lines going in like that. All right, so again, sort of this chasm uh, Fantastic Maps has a tutorial, actually. I'll put a picture up here uh, where he does uh, really some nice chasm drawings on, from that top-down angle. Really like his stuff. A place where you might have one of those is actually, uh, you could make kind of a, a river gulch. So if you have a river, let, let's say we have, we've got some mountains here on our map, and there's this river that comes out of the mountains and it exits right here. Uh, you could, you know, choose to, to make a kind of a chasm right here on this river. And I'm, I have mine a little too small to be able to see it, but that's where you could do one of these sorts of things is with a river. <clears throat> the water has just carved that area, or perhaps there was just a natural opening there, and so that's a low point where the water has begun to flow. Now, if you do want to shade your cliffs, that can be a little bit tricky um, in terms of like, you know, hatching or something like that. It's definitely a little bit tricky. Uh, I usually save mine for Photoshop when I'm doing my shading, but of course you can always buy something like these uh, gray brush pens, which I highly recommend. I really love these. Uh, I'm gonna put links to all these products in the video description, and I actually, uh, I'll put a link to my Amazon storefront, which is uh, a new thing that I got, and there's actually a map drawing section of my Amazon storefront where you can find these, you can find the uh, Pigma Micron pens that I use, and a bunch of other stuff. So we'll start with a lighter gray here, and we're just gonna do the whole cliff in this lighter gray. And then you can come in with a slightly darker gray. And uh, if our light is coming, it totally depends which way your light is coming. If your light's coming this way, you're probably not gonna have any shading here. 
But let's say that our light's coming this way. That's the uh, direction I generally do this on maps for some reason. Then we would shade a little bit more the cliffs that are facing this way. Those that are facing this way or this way are gonna get less shading. So something like this would get quite a bit of shading. And this, and I, I often will shade on the, the right side of these lines. This would get much less than this right here. And this would get a little more than this right here. This would get less than this right here. And hopefully you get the idea. So again, these uh, brush, gray brush pens can do a really nice job for um, things like this or for shading mountains as I've done in a previous video. So lastly, I'll just say experiment, play around, uh, look at lots of maps and you know what, go look at just drawings of cliffs or even photos of cliffs and you'll get some inspiration. But this is the method that I generally use and I like it. Uh, again, you can do very, very sheer cliffs or you can do a little bit more sloped uh, canyons and, and uh, gully walls and things like that. Let me know what you think down in the comments. All right, that's all for this one, everybody. I wanna thank my patrons so much for their support. These people are amazing. They're making it happen for me. Now, I recently actually revised my patron tiers and rewards and all that stuff, so go check it out. There's some cool new stuff, including a quarterly encounter map that has the possibility of turning into a monthly encounter map if I get enough patron support. So definitely go check it out, be a part of the mayhem, and I think you'll like what you see over there. Patreon.com slash WASD20. As always, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and everybody take care. You'll see me again very soon.